Welcome to Now in Android, episode number 31. First off, let's talk about modern Android development. There were a few things going on with the Mad Skills series. First of all, maybe it's time to get your Mad score. Have you ever wondered how mad you are, or more importantly, how modern your app is? We've provided a new plugin for Android Studio, which you can find in the plugin marketplace. Install and run that plugin, and then it'll give you a mad scorecard that you can then share in Twitter. Just something fun to do to figure out how much of these four pillars of modern Android uh, you are using in your app, um, and let us all know about it as well as the Mad Skill series, which is rolling on with more and more content. Uh, so we finished up the material design components, the MDC uh, series with a couple of episodes. It was a material motion episode from Nick Rout, uh, talking about the four patterns of motion in material. And he walked through the reply sample app to show you uh, how that stuff works, as well as a, com a code lab that is based on that app. And then we had a community tip from Zara Dominguez, where she showed how her team at her company uses the materials design catalog app, uh, both to see how things actually work and look in practice, and then to take a look at the source code of that app to see how to implement these things. Also, we ended up with a live Q&A, uh, and this had people from both developer relations as well as the engineering team, experts in MDC. We got questions from Twitter, we got questions from YouTube, we got questions from the universe uh, in this live Q&A chat that we had on YouTube. Um, so hopefully you got your question in, and hopefully you got your answer back out the other side. Then we continued on with a wrap up of that series, so check out Nick Rout's article if you want links to all of the content that we created as part of that series as well as the articles that talk about this stuff as well. And the next week, uh, which is this week, we started the next series, which is on Kotlin and Jetpack. There are two episodes in that so far. The first is from Florina Montanescu on using KTX. Um, so this gives an overview of the Kotlin extensions library that we provide and shows how we use KTX both for platform as well as APIs in the unbundled libraries. And Florina shows how she uses it, for example, uh, when she uses live data and view models. Uh, we also have a second episode from Manuel Vivo on simplifying APIs with coroutines. And this talks about how to take existing APIs and libraries and create adapter APIs using Kotlin coroutines flow um, to simplify some of the complexities for Kotlin developers, such as uh, the the uh, intensity, the, the difficulty we have with nested callbacks in some of these solutions for asynchronous uh, behavior in these libraries, and you can vastly simplify that by using coroutines in Kotlin. Uh, there is going to be more content in that series uh, as we go on. That series will continue in January after a bit of a holiday break here. Uh, so go check out the Mad Skills series on YouTube, the articles, and uh, continue checking out that content as we continue producing it. There were a couple of important fixes for the documentation of Android. First of all, in permission. So the last few releases is probably obvious. We've been making a lot of changes in the platform to make it uh, a little more obvious to users how their user data is being used and giving them more transparency and control over the use of that data. But that means that app developers need to figure out how to respond to these behavior changes. So we've clarified the documentation to make it a little bit easier to understand what is going on there. We're continuing to work on it. Uh, but in the meantime, there were important changes to the permissions on Android Guide. Uh, we talk a little bit more about how permissions work in general. We have some best practices there and give information about how to use these permissions in your app. Also, it's worth asking yourself the question of whether you actually need permissions. It's common practice for applications to ask for permissions for some things where maybe you don't need that. If you're asking for an external app to take that picture, you don't need the camera permission. That app is, is taking care of that uh, side of the house for you. Uh, also, on the room side, we uh, enhance the documentation that we provide for the room local persistence uh, uh, library. So we have uh, one section on using data access objects or DAOs uh, with room that gives an overview of how these works. Talk about using the built-in query methods that are easy just to plug in and use directly, as well as custom methods that you can create using the at query annotation. There's also another guide talking about write, writing asynchronous DAO queries. Uh, talks more about doing these queries, in particular about doing these uh, in an inherently asynchronous world. In Android X, of course, there were releases. There are releases every two weeks. Uh, the releases in particular that I wanted to call out were a couple of stable releases that you might want to check out. Browser 1.3.0. Uh, this one has uh, the ability to pass freeform commands 
with the trusted web activity APIs, as well as various other features, including setting colors on custom tabs. Media 2 1.1.0 came out. Um, this is, has a whole bunch of bug fixes, uh, along with uh, handling media tracks and interop with uh, the Android X media library. Makes sense, Media 2 media library. I think they get together just fine. Uh, also, Wear Input 1.0.0. This is the first version of Wear Input, and this provides support for wearable buttons now in the Android X library. There were also a bunch of other releases in there, including some stable releases of bug fixes uh, for XF interface, media, and navigation. In Android Studio, there were a couple of articles posted um, talking about new versions. So Jamal Eason uh, published an article talking about the, the next release of Android Studio that is now in Canary named Arctic Fox. So the first thing you may notice about that is the name. Uh, normally we refer, to and we refer to Android Studio with really interesting names like 4.1 and 4.2. And now we're using actual animal names to refer to them, Arctic Fox being the first one. So it talks about that naming thing there. Also, we talk about it in a podcast that I hope to publish this week. Uh, have a chat with Tor and Roma, uh, sort of a wrap up of the year. And we talk about the, the naming change for Android Studio as part of that. Jamal also talks about some of the features in that Canary release, including an I, uh, a UI, specifically on Mac OS for now, coming to other platforms later, um, for pairing with a device over the new feature that we had in, uh, in the latest Android release. Um, for doing Wi-Fi debugging with devices. Uh, there's a layout validation tool, and there's also continued support for Jetpack Compose. I should point out, if it's not obvious, if you are doing Jetpack Compose development, that is always done in the Canary release of the tool because that is very much pre-release. So continue to use the Canary for uh, your continued efforts in Jetpack Compose development. Also, Marat Yenner posted an article about an Android Studio Gradle uh, release. Uh, he talks about the latest changes in 4.2. He also talks about the next version, which is also going through a naming change. Uh, we are now going to sync to the actual Gradle versions instead of the Studio versions, which explains why we're going to jump from version 4.2 up to 7.0. No, we didn't make that many changes. We're just aligning with something that makes a little bit more sense uh, for the underlying technology that we're using there. There were a bunch of articles that were posted that are worth checking out. First of all, List Adapter. Megan Meta has been posting a series on Recycler View. Now, Recycler View has been out for a while. I expect most Android developers are already using it for that feed of data that you have. It's a pretty common uh, element to have in there. But if you're new to Recycler View, if you're trying to figure out what's going on there, it became clear to us that we don't provide some of the basic fundamental information. I just want a simpler recycler view to do some tech stuff. I just want to understand how it works. And so we took a run at uh, simplifying the documentation, adding more samples in there, as well as this series of articles that Megan's been doing. So the latest one in, in that is the second article that she's published, uh, which is on List Adapter, which you can use as an easier way to get an adapter that actually provides more information to recycler view, which allows you to have better performance because it doesn't have to redraw everything, uh, as well as automatic item animations. If you're just using uh, a custom adapter and you don't plug into diffutil uh, by default, which List Adapter does, then you're not going to get that functionality. Um, so you definitely want to look into using List Adapter in general for your recycler view needs. In performance, I've been looking into startup performance recently. I started with uh, testing uh, uh, how to test startup performance a few weeks ago. And then I now have a, a two-part series where I look into the app startup library, which reached 1.0 uh, recently. Part one looks into content providers and how they are generally used to initialize libraries and how they generally do it in kind of a hidden way. Like they just kind of sneak into your merge manifest and maybe you didn't know they were there. Um, so we look into how that works and how that could be affecting your startup performance as this stuff gets automatically initialized and loaded um, unbeknownst to you. And then part two looks into using the app startup library potentially to pull several requests and pull those content providers out of the merge manifest and allow App Startup to lazily initialize the libraries as that makes sense for you in your application. Also, there was a really interesting article posted about GPS location on the Android developers blog. Now, most of the article is about the user feature of basically getting better location information in cities. The problem, which uh, is apparently called Urban Canyons, we talked about it in a very old uh, Android developers backstage a uh, podcast episode years ago in 2014, uh, we talked with Mark Sogaitis, who was the TL for a location. Urban Canyons is 
the issue where when you're in a city, GPS really likes line of sight to figure out your location. So you're walking down the street and you can't see the satellite, uh, but rather you get to that satellite by bouncing off a building. And then the software has a hard time, well, the sensor has a hard time figuring out where you are because the signal is being bounced around all these tall buildings in these canyons that these cities have. Um, so they figured out using interesting technology of 3D models that, uh, that are provided for many of the major cities in the world, um, how we can actually track better location information through a combination of that geometry as well as the GPS signal. Totally interesting in a very geeky way. Uh, but also there is a developer surface area there that they talk briefly about. One is that if you are not using Fuse Location Provider to get your location, you probably want to. Um, that is how you're gonna access that enhanced location uh, information on the platform. Also, uh, there's a new API in Fuse Location Provider called Get Current Location. This is a much easier and more straightforward way to get your current location. Previously, you had to register for a callback and then wait for it to call back. And then you would take that first call back and then unregister. And it was just sort of this convoluted way of, of getting the thing that was really pretty simple that you were asking for. So get uh, current location is the API to use. Um, and there's a link there in the article so you can get more information on that. Also, there's a new sample called current location Kotlin. Uh, so you can check that out to see how to use this in practice. Chris Baines has this sample app that he's been working on called Tivi, uh, and he has been going through an effort to migrate that to use Jetpack Compose. So he's completed a major step of that so that now all of the UI for Tivi is written in Compose. So he did an analysis of what were the changes uh, in, and what did he observe in, in doing that, in making it all work in Compose in three areas in particular. He looked at APK size, which is smaller in the new version, which is great, much smaller. Uh, method count, which is somewhat smaller in the new version, which is also good, and build uh, duration, which is a little bit smaller. Um, so all of that is moving in the right direction, and you can check out the article for more information on that, uh, and he will continue that migration, so I'm sure there's going to be more on that in the future as well. Camera Controller is a new API in Camera X. Camera X is still in beta. So the original Camera X API had this thing called Camera View. It combines the logic of both the controller as well as the UI, and that's really too much for one thing to control, right? You really want a separation concerns and encapsulate all this logic in different places, right? So it's been refactored into the preview view and this new API that just came out called Camera Controller. Uh, so the article goes over how to use the Camera Controller class and how things can compare how you used to do it in camera view and how you, you now do it in camera controller. Finally, there was uh, one more podcast episode that we had on ADB. Roma and Tor and I talked with Jesse Wilson, who works at Square. Jesse is famous for working on very popular uh, open source libraries out there, including OKHTP, OKIO, and Moshi. Uh, we talked to him about those libraries in particular, about libraries in general, about framework development, about, um, uh, about that that gene that we have that makes us see a problem here and then create a library, an open source library solution for like that one little problem that you saw over there. Uh, so very interesting conversation with Jesse. I hope you check that out. I hope you check out everything else. As usual, all the links to all of this stuff uh, are in the article that is associated with now in Android number 31. And if you like the video, go ahead and like and share and subscribe to the Android Developers channel on YouTube. Thanks.